MG Rob back with you. And today we're going to play a little bit on the Jeep. So the Jeep's been sitting out here patiently waiting for me to get back onto it. But before I go and put the SU carburetor on it, what I want to do is do a leak down test. I've never actually had a leak down tester in my shop, and I just recently bought one, so I want to do a leak down test on this since the compression numbers were a bit low on it. So I just need to get it fired up, get a little heat into it, and get it into the shop, and then we'll go from there. So now I got the Jeep in the shop, and we're going to do a leak down test on it. Now, I had compression readings that were like 70 to 110 range, if I remember correctly. So, the ones that are down around 70, I'm really worried about. Um, I need to know where it's leaking from, why it doesn't have enough compression in those cylinders. Because that will determine how I proceed on fixing this thing and whether even throwing the other carburetor on it will even make any difference at all. So what I used to do for leak down test was just put air in the cylinder and then just kind of listen and guess how bad does it sound like it's leaking and do I have a lot come out the tailpipe or out the intake, but I, I, I never really knew what the numbers were. So I finally did actually break down and buy myself a leak down tester. So what this does is you're pumping air into here and then it goes through the gauges and then you pump it into the cylinders. And you set the pressure that you're putting in the, the cylinders all through this gauge, and then you read what the reading is on this gauge. So this is amount of air going in, and this is how much it's actually holding. So like the easiest is to just do it at 100 psi, and then if it's showing 80, then you know you have 20% leak down, or if it's showing 70, you know you got 30% leak down. Otherwise, um, if you use a lower pressure, then you just got to do the math. Uh, but what pressure you use will depend on the engine you're working with. Uh, because once you do put pressure in there, it will try to force the cylinder down. So when you do it, you should always have it in gear with the parking brake on so that it doesn't lurch forward on you. So let's go ahead and um, get started. Let me get the spark plugs out. And we'll go from there. All right, with these being the waterproof spark plugs, they're really long. And a regular spark plug socket will not fit them. But I did find that a half inch drive impact socket is long enough to get a hold of them. So that's what I use to get them out with. So, on most overhead valve engines, you can just pull the valve cover, watch the valves rock, and you'll see the exhaust valve close, intake valve open as you're turning it. And then once the intake valve closes as you're turning it, you're on the compression stroke. And then you can, you know, keep turning it and feel the pressure coming out of that cylinder and until you get the top dead center, which you can look at the timing marks on one and four on a four cylinder. And when it gets to zero, you're at top dead center. Now, two and three, you'll be 180 out from that. So with this one here, we can't really do that so easily because you can't see the exhaust valve. Well, you can, I can see the intake valve, so I could do it that way. But I may not take the valve cover off. I may just try to just turn it until I can feel pressure coming out. And then find top dead center. All right, so I brought it up to top dead center. Put it in gear and lock the brake on. So now what we do is... <clears throat> I increase the pressure here 
until I get to 100 PSI and then look at what I've got here. And then that tells me percent of leak down. All right, so I'm now at 100 PSI here, but I'm only holding 35 here, which means I got 65% leak down. Now I got to look at where. So we can listen to the carburetor. I hear nothing there. We can take the oil cap off. And yep, I hear quite a bit coming through there. So that means all the leak down on this cylinder is through the rings. All right, so I got now I got number four cylinder up on top dead center. And we can try that one since that's the next easiest one to do. All right, now that one's holding 75 pounds which means I only have 25% leak down, so that's much better than the first cylinder, the number one is. It sounds like it's probably out of the crankcase. Now I have to go back to the tailpipe and listen there. If I hear it out of the tailpipe, that means it's an exhaust valve leaking. So I went back to the tailpipe, and yes, the exhaust valve is leaking a bit on this cylinder. All right, so now I got number two up on top dead center on the compression stroke. We'll see what that one does. Wow, that cylinder doesn't look too bad. It's at... Uh, about 85-87%. And you expect to see yeah, 10 to 15% percent leak, leak down anyway, even on a brand new engine. So that puts that cylinder right about where you expect it. Alright, so now we got number three. And that's sitting right about at 85%. So looks like both cylinders two and three look pretty good. Well, now I know what I'm working with on this thing. And what I'm going to hope at this point is either with as much as it's sat over the last 10 years, I've either got some rings that are just gummed up in the piston or some rings that just need time to be able to reseat and seal properly on that one cylinder. But meanwhile, I went ahead and put a little bit of penetrating oil down in the cylinder, and we'll let that sit for a little bit and see if that helps. Uh, it definitely did get show better readings after doing that, but I'll have to run it for a little bit and then check it again later to find out if it helped. But at any rate, uh, next time you see this thing, I'll probably be trying to actually install the SU carburetor on it and see if we can get it running on that. At any rate, this is MG Rob. Later.